Wasps in the family of Pompilidae are unique because they prey on spiders. These wasps are commonly called spider wasps or spider hunting wasps. These flying menaces live solitary lives and do not nest together like most other wasp or hornet species and they live off the sweet juices of flowers just like other hornets, bees and wasps. It is just their larval stages that require a nutritious spider snack. This spider wasp was caught dragging a bark spider over the sand at Mabibi Beach Camp, which is located in the northern reaches of Isimangulisu Wetland Park in South Africa. It clearly won the fight with this tree dalling and web spinning spider that is part of the larger orb weaver family of arachnids, paralyzing it with its potent neurotoxic sting. If you are wondering how painful this thing would be, then take note that according to the Schmidt Pain Index, which rates hornet and wasp stings from 0 to 4, with 0 being a walk in the park, and 4 being like dropping a running hairdryer into your bubble bath, think blinding, fierce and shockingly electric pain. At a rating of 4, this is as painful as wasp stings go. The wasp is looking to dig a hole in the soft sand and then make a burrow down there in which it will deposit the paralyzed but still alive spider in order to lay a single egg on it and then the egg will hatch and produce a larva which will feed on the poor spider. It will molt a few times and emerge as an adult spider wasp killing more spiders in turn. Poor little spiders. Interesting fact, the size of the spider on which the larvae feed will determine the gender of the wasp. Larger spiders in the burrow tend to produce female wasps, which are the ones doing the spider hunting, while smaller spiders tend to produce male wasps that will instead just mate with the female wasps. Once the spider is stashed away underground and the egg is laid, the wasp starts to fill in the hole again scraping sand down the hole and then compacting it with her abdomen using fast rock drill like movements. She does not want to leave the door open for any other opportunistic predators to steal her offspring's provisions. She also makes extra sure to cover her tracks, roughing up the dig site afterwards to make it look like undisturbed terrain. No one will know she was there until her monster progeny emerges from the soil to rain terror on the poor spiders of Isi Mangulisu Park.